fuck yeah, everybody. Dreams are coming true. Welcome, everyone. How are you guys? Yeah! It's all happening. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, just sit over there. I guess you could just... All right. Just all right. All right. Calm right. down. That's, that's an eager Taylor. Well, yeah, that's very eager. I'm excited that David Taylor's so excited. <laughs> I've never been more excited than when you see an excited David Taylor. We just got back from Toronto. Uh... If you're wondering why we're wearing baseball jerseys, you know what? I just I must have been too stoned to realize what you were talking about because I just figured out I'm not wearing a blue jacket jersey. I thought I was wearing a blue jacket jersey. That's why you said hockey. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so crazy. I just realized it because somebody thought... asked if I lived in Canada. I'm like, no. Why would you ask that? I'm wearing a blue jacket, and I looked at your back, and it had a baseball logo. I'm like, oh wait a second, what am I wearing? Wow. This is so. This is baseball. This is like their professional baseball team. Yeah, the Toronto Blue Jays is a very, very famous baseball organization. Does the United States play versus Canada? Uh, yeah, well, yes. They're one of the only Canadian Major League Baseball teams. Wow. I didn't know. I thought it was like USA only for baseball. Um, no. No. It, it seems like it would be. Right. But it's actually one of those sports that they just barely cross over. It's all Americans that are playing over there. Like, there's not, I don't think there's too many great Canadian-born baseball players. The closer you get to the equator, the better your baseball player is. It doesn't go up. Right. right? Is there football that does that, or is it just baseball that does it? Um, football. Well, there has to be hockey, I guess. God, wait. Yeah, there isn't an NFL team up there. Or is basketball? There? Basketball, yes, but they're always horrendously bad. Oh, right. There's the uh, Toronto Raptors. Why are we talking about sports? I don't know. <laughs> it's interesting. But we had it. fun, man. We we uh, the, Toronto was like the. It seemed like it was like the richest city I've ever been in my life. Like you, out here, it look it looks like there's evidence everywhere. It looks like L.A. is just bankrupt. It's definitely Canada's Tokyo. Yeah. Like it is bumping. It, there was so many skyscrapers, this guy told us that it was like 70% of all of the cranes that are used to make skyscrapers are in Toronto. Yeah. And these things can't, they can't move easily. It takes them years just to move a crane, I guess, to another country. I guess, you, or you can't do it. I don't know. But, it, it's but, all bumping, and the energy yeah. there is crazy. And I asked somebody, I go, why, uh, why are, is this all possible? Like, why are the doors open, and everybody's having fun, and people are drinking, and whoa, why is it always like this and he goes because they have no guns there there's no people just don't carry guns anywhere or have them at home and he explained to me how that makes it so that uh, you can have fun all the time <laughs> and, it, and it made sense by the way when he was done after he explained it I'm like oh my god so it's sort of a crazy thing that I learned when I was there too in that or that dude was really stoned and we were playing a pot cafe that was filled with 100 people sm smoking weed and blowing it in our face when we were on stage. And you had what is called, and very popular in Canada, called a green out. Yeah. That everybody uses this word. Never heard it before. Have you ever? Me neither. I never heard it, but it's used and, and we saw a few cases of green out. Yeah. See, what they do in Canada is, because they don't have the mountains and beaches that Southern California has. Josh, you gotta be. You have to. You have to be the guy that patrols that, bro. That's your. The that's Iron your Patriots job. here, by the, the way. Iron He's Patriot normally our security guard, but we know he can't go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to be, make all your like. He can only protect us from what's in front of him. And what, another great thing about the uh, about Toronto is that a lot of people came up to me just going like, uh, you know, what's that catchphrase you say? For every life you save, there's a million new ways to die. <laughs> yeah, people were just doing that in Toronto. Right. I have Pe to ask you to something, Tony. Yeah, sure. I noticed on Twitter that you referenced Jimi Hendrix and said that you touched the sky. I was wondering if you brought me any weed from Canada so I can touch the sky. <laughs> no, I didn't bring you any weed from Canada. Luckily, I have California pot, though. That's cool. <laughs> and let's be honest, everyone in Canada that had the California weed, that was the best weed. <laughs> and totally, and they do, and they're like, man, this is sweet. This is some fucking Cali grown. And I'm like, that's what I've been smoking for the last seven years. Uh, but um, the green out, what's crazy about the green out, before we get back to the, uh, to the Patriots, I have a question for him. Um, so since they don't have mountains and beaches, my theory is that uh, they just fucking smoke until they pass out that's their limit 
their limit when they're like, oh, I got high last night. When they say high, that means they passed out. And they all call it the green out. Like, I heard it from yeah. multiple people the whole weekend. Which, it's just an adorable way to say uh, passed out. Yeah. Like, it makes it seem like it's not unhealthy if it's a green out. When it was either you on stage or the, uh, the our opener, there was a huge crash, which sounded like a plate drop, and, and, and that was a person trying to stand up yeah. and falling over and passing out from too much weed. Yeah. And, and there was one point in which I, myself, thank you, I did Canada all the way because there I was in the bathroom at one point. And you're professional. You smoke weed every day, right. like, a lot. Yeah. Probably more than me. Well, I don't smoke weed all day. I, I wait a little bit. I wait a little bit in the afternoon. Well, I mean, uh, Comedian's Day starts from like 8 p.m. to like 4 a.m. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> I like waiting. I notice that I get uh, I get higher if I wait like till like 4 or 5 or right. 6. So you're in the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom in Toronto. Are you freaking out in the bathroom? I had brought you on stage. You're about 20 minutes into your set. By the way, give it up for He killed every show. Brian Redband. <laughs> Crushing. Longest Un set ever I've done. Unbelievable. I mean, Thanks. it's always fun to watch a friend get to do a long set for the first time. Like, we, we're always doing, you know, 8, 15, 12, right. maybe 20 on a fun night. But to be able to do 45 and just stretch fucking out. rock it. Yeah, yeah. totally. And uh, anyway, I'm in the bathroom. There's a little door lock thing that's just one of those loops that you put in the, uh, in the tiny circle. It's not like a twist thing. It's one of those because Canada's safe and nobody gives a fuck. Nobody's going to bother you. Like, nobody even knocks on the doors there. They just wait for five minutes to make sure nobody's... Anyway. So I'm, uh, there I am going to the bathroom, and it, all of a sudden the thought of a heart attack hits me, which is crazy because I was doing a bit about every time I think I'm having a heart attack, I'm just too high. And that's when I know I'm high enough. Anyway... But the last thing, like, to fulfill the prophecy of my own bit, I'm like, oh, my God, heart attack? And then I'm like wait a second, and I just start sweating, boom. I'm like, oh, God, this is all happening. I know what it's like right before you pass out, and I was lucky. What you learn from passing out before is, a good part about passing out before a positive is that you learn how to pass out better. <laughs> you really do. So when that happened to me, and I'm like, boom, wah, 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 I'm like, okay, here we go. So I'm like on a mission. I pop the lock. I open the door. I know that I have this four or five second window. And the staff is right there, these cool bartenders. And everybody, by the way, Puff Mama, Joe Tuchito, ha at Hazardous on Twitter. And uh, guys that made us these Nosa awesome jerseys. Bahana, Jason, the guys that made the jerseys. The hospitality there was incredible. I bust out the door, and I go, I'm about to pass out. And I'm going like this. Like, I'm actually, I open the door, I take one step out, and I'm like, I'm about to pass out. Like crawling and, and bent and over. They, and they all look at me like, you know, I had just been on stage twice for 45 minutes. We had all been having a fun week, and they're all just like, ah! And I'm like, no, 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 no. No jokey. I'm like, I'm like, I'm about to fucking pass out. And they just fucking, they split up in four different directions at the same time. One went and grabbed a Sprite. One went and grabbed a fucking wet towel. Another guided me outside. And the little girl carried you. It was unbelievable. No, <laughs> like a baby. There was no little baby. Because I'm, I'm saying you're very light. Oh, yes. Yeah. There was a little baby that carried me <laughs> in imagination land. Um, and fucking, uh, they got, I, I was right on that rim, brim of passing out, and it didn't happen. That Cause, sucks, Because of the nice people there. But it was a green out. I mean, I was out of it. There was a point in which I had given up. I went outside and I, uh, I took my shirt off. Yeah, which is crazy if you know Tony. Because Tony's not one of those guys who just takes his shirt off. Right. He actually wears multiple. He has like seven shirts on right now. Yeah, I always wear multiple <laughs> layers. Two pairs of socks at all times. Usually a pair of thermals under my jeans. Yeah. But I took off my shirt, man. And I uh, just started sweating profusely. But we fought through it. Something about the Sprite, the fresh air. We got through it, man, and I did not pass out in Toronto. You tried, Toronto. <laughs> you tried to take down the golden pony. Well, guess what? This pony doesn't go down that easily. I puked in Toronto. <laughs> Tomato um, basil soup. <laughs> I looked at that on that hotel menu, just like you did that same night. Was it Friday night or whatever yeah. night? And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is going to be good. What do we got? And I looked at that tomato soup, and I'm just like, 
I want it, but I just don't think that it would be right. Oh, no. Like three hours it's later, so I am butter. puking tomato basil <laughs> soup. Like I, I did one of those things where you wake up and you're like, wait, something's wrong. Like the back of my throat has that little teardrop or something that's going on there. Like it's like a little itch. And like, oh, 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 oh. And I stand up, filling my mouth up, holding my mouth together like a, pin, like a clothespin just yeah. so it won't go out. Get to it and just reds everywhere. It looked like I was puking blood. And when you're half asleep, you're not thinking like tomato basil soup. You think you're puking blood. And I was like, what the f It was fucked up. I love it. Yeah, Toronto. <laughs> I noticed on Thursday morning at the airport, you had a video of Tony saying he was irritated by your drunkness. Uh -oh. were, you, were you drunk already early Thursday morning or from last night before? The... Yeah, we decided to stay up all night yeah. and just party. Well, you didn't even sleep. When you take no. a, when you take a Thursday morning five a.m. flight with a friend, and you live our type of lifestyles, yeah, it's much easier to, to black out at LAX. not go to yeah. sleep that night for what an hour and a half. It's better to plow through and then get on the plane and crash hard, which worked perfectly, even yeah. with the layover, which is rare. Um, we are up, moved, passed out again, out. Those are the best. Nothing better than sleeping on a plane to me. I don't know much. That's what he kept doing. There, see that? See what happens when he says that? That kind of energy. <laughs> That's the whole thing. So he kept saying that over and over again with people in line in front of us, behind us. Say the whole thing? It's just electricity and wires. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Martin is like the worst assistant producer of this show. I mean, I could it's ever fine, back it, there texting. It's fine. Man. You just grab a couple towels, man. No, no. I, that's, mean, I got rubber in the bottom of my shoes. That's supposed to help, But it's right? on the table. Oh, yeah. I guess that's not good. It's just, I love how he's back there. Not only was he watching, not doing anything, he was also texting. Oh, wait, I got some. I, I love that he's part of the, the fun set, though. Like, we really have the worst assistant producer guy helping us that you could ever imagine. I'm glad this carpet's stained red with the tears of a million dead comics. So true. <laughs> it is very precise strategic coloring that they use on these carpets. A, a, a combination of dark red and black at the comedy store. It's just a mix. So you can't tell what's a stain and what's a fucking blood from a corpse. Anyway. Um, I'm very excited. Oh yeah, Patriot. One more question. That joint that I uh, that joint that I gave you last week after the show for your uh, participation of it. Uh, how did that How did that work How did that work out for you? I'm having very mystical feelings when I smoke that weed. I start pondering the mysteries of the universe. I realize that we're all at the center of our own universe, and it's all an illusion. Oh, fuck. <laughs> like that Corey, that Corey guy of Glee. He just died in your imagination. In another universe, he's going on having a nice life with Leah Michelle. Absolutely. Did you understand what I'm saying? I, I believe that I die almost once a week. And, and I think that every time that I feel like, what? How the fuck did I make it home or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think I died. And in some way, yeah. there's a Tony crying with a shirt off outside my funeral. <laughs> yeah. Having a brown out, which That's is where he's just shitting himself. Brown out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Patriot, what kind of, just one more question. Like when you say uh, uh, pondering the mysteries of the universe, like what's another one? What's another What's mystery? another thing you were thinking of? I don't know. Well, the thing that trips me out is we'll never know where we came from in the beginning, how we came from nothing to be something, because it would be like a cat chasing its own tail. We'll never know where we came in the beginning, but why can't we be God? We're God. There is no God. We're not creatures. We're the creator. We are God. Each one of us are, are imagining yeah. this. I love the Iron Patriot, yeah. everybody. Passionate. He's in the game tonight, man. He is dialed in. I love it. Well, it's true, though, what he's saying. We're our own God. Because like, your it's universe is not my understand. universe. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that it's not true. It's, it's coming from our imagination. You know, the sun is a million times bigger than the earth. And then they found stars that are a million times bigger than the sun, and so on and so on. But then you start to feel insignificant if you look at it that way. But when you realize it's our imagination, you realize it's us. You know, you don't start, you, you don't start thinking in that insignificant way, like, oh, it's so big, I'm just this little, you know. Why do I get the feeling, why do I get the feeling that that joint I gave you, uh, <laughs> that joint I gave you last Monday, why do I get the feeling that you waited seven days to smoke it no. right before this show? No, I want more. I like when you think of weed. 
Just give him a taste, Tony. I want more. Just give I him want a taste. more. He sounds for it's a moment where he sounds so human when he when he's asking for pot. Like, oh no, I want more, please. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, uh, mystery about that. It's nice to escape the sober thoughts of the day. The silver thoughts. The sober, the, the, oh. worry, the worrisome thoughts. So the thoughts true. thinking about reality of your bills and all that shit. So true. I agree. Fuck yeah, man. One more time for the Patriot as we are about to bring up tonight's guest. I'm uh, very excited to have him. Uh, ever since I started here, he's been one of the guys that I've always looked up to. He's a hilarious comedian, specializes in late night here at the Comedy Store, which is one of the hardest positions to be in. Um, he carries it. He's dark. He's different. He's original. He's fascinating. He's definitely one of the smartest friends that I have. He's a, uh, a writer. He, he helped, uh, he's, uh, he's a writer for TV, uh, The Jezzelneck Offensive, The Comedy Central Roast. But more than that, a fantastic comedian, one of my great friends. Put your hands together for the one and only David Taylor, everybody. Here he is, live and in the flesh. That was a yeah. tremendous opening. Very excited to have David on. Very excited to be here, Tony. Very um, excited. He keeps it so real. He's uh, funny as fuck. What have you been up to lately, Dave? What's happening? This. I love it. This is pretty much my only credit uh, going for like the last six months. So Now, you normally, you're the guy that also, in the L.A. comedy circuit, you are notorious, notorious for your... Uh, for these awesome parties that you have, the barbecues. Those are over. There will be no more. Why? Because Boone stole books from my last one, so I'm not going to do it anymore. That's, he so, stole books? No, he, he stole art books from me. So I told him, Boone, if I don't get those books back, there will be no more barbecues. And he did not return them, so there will be no more barbecues. Well, can, I, can I tell you something? Yeah. That is not fair for guys like me who have been telling you for years <laughs> to not fucking back Boone Shakalaka that he steals from you. And that's not even the first occurrence with you. One time... I know, he stole my uh, iPad, or iPod, that little... Uh, yeah, he's such, he's such a moron, this Boone Shakalaka. I know he's adorable to all, you new, to all you people newer in comedy, but give it a few years of that bullshit every fucking night. Let me promise you, he's a fucking crazy maniac. There anyway... Will, there will be no more. But D this is Boone for you. David's parked in this lot. You work years to become a paid regular here at the comedy store. One of the only fucking perks really is that you to get to park like in the lot here. And Boone went into David's car, got his iPod. This is the best part, though. He tried to sell it to Alex Moore, comedy store employee at the time. <laughs> Alex you know, the tries odd to thing open it up. That, uh, you know, Alex called me and goes, uh, I think I have your iPod. And I was like, I thought it was in my kitchen. Uh, I was Whoa. looking for it. But I'm lazy about cleaning. So he calls. He says, I think I have your iPod. Your name's in it. And I said, okay. And I said, um, you know, is it full of embarrassing music? And he said, yes. So I'm like, that's, that's my iPod. Uh, and then he, he, gave it, he gave it to me. And then I went to Boone. And I'm like, Boone, um, I don't want you to get banned. Try not to steal shit out of people's cars and then resell it here. And honestly, the rare thing was that Alex told me about it. Because a lot of people would have just said, oh, I got David Taylor's iPod. And right. then just used it. Right. But then Boone said, can I have $5? I said, why would I give you money for the iPod? And right. he said, finder's fee. Oh, my God. Oh, what about the Steelers' fee? Yeah, that breaks so, even. That's $5 if you steal something. Well, anyway, the point is this, is that he took, like, seven nice art books from my uh, shelf. And well, I called but, uh, and I said, hey, uh, tell Boone if he doesn't return the books. If he returns them, I won't have a problem with him. If he doesn't return them, there will be no more barbecues. And he told people that I didn't take them. That doofball. That guy's such an idiot. I, so, I, can't, I can't believe you'd give him a shot after stealing your iPod and start inviting him to your barbecue. So you that's know, what I always had a problem honestly, with. Honestly, he gave I'm me a benefit. The benefit was he really lessened the amount of cans I had to clean <laughs> because he took them. <laughs> it, honestly, see, it, it, took, it cut. I mean, my <laughs> cleaning time was cut in one-third because he would take... Cans. He wouldn't take, no, it wouldn't take bottles. They're too uh, heavy. Oh, right. But that's because he didn't bring a shopping cart, which I wish that I had provided. But on it, cans and little plastic, oh, man, it really made life easy. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, wouldn't you invite a robot that cleaned? But see, the thing with the, uh, the thing with, uh, it's like Rosie from the good Jetsons. looking, good looking comedians like myself, when we're at your barbecues, we, we can't eat a hot dog there because Boone's staring at us 
from oh, yeah. across yeah. the grill like an animal. That's the nice thing. I always got along with Boone because I'm ugly. So he didn't want to fuck me. We're good. He never asked me to shower at my place. Never was a problem. <laughs> so, and honestly, with a Boone that doesn't ask you to shower at your place, he's okay. He's not a bad guy. But then when he steals your art books, that's the end of the barbecue. Right. So that's just the deal. Well, of course. So there you I, go. Your very own Boone guys, here's the, one of my mortal enemies. Here's the nice thing. When I was... Uh, when I was starting to do comedy uh, many years ago, Stephanie Escajeda threw the best parties. Kevin, you remember this? You ever go to this? You Kevin know? Christie is in the house in the back of the room, room, everybody. She threw the fucking best. The only one I missed, they were like, I'm like, I didn't miss anything. They're like, you missed the kissing booth, David. I'm like, what? I just, gee whiz. Because Stephanie was, you know, attractive and I believe bisexual. So that really brought the girls in. Uh, whereas mine is very dude heavy, so it's its own particular thing. Anyway, the point is Stephanie threw hers in Koreatown, and, and they went on for a while, and then they ended. And uh, somebody else threw part. Nick Swartzen threw great parties at the roller skating rink, that where the Crips was founded. Uh, that that place went out of business. Well, ro- like the roller skating, the World on Wheels. Uh, that ended when he was held up at gunpoint. Uh, in the parking lot by somebody who thought that comedians paid a lot more than they did. The point is this. These things run their course. There's a life cycle for all things with parties. So I'm sure that one of you guys will be the next to create the popular party. There you go. Party. He's handing over the reins. Yes. To a bunch of people that probably live in their cars. Ask away. Ask away. What's it going to take to get Boone banned? Boone, honest to God, fits in here as much as we all do. He does. Yeah, never since Neil Armstrong have they put a ban on the Boone. Something like that, I, I believe. Very nice. Anyway, uh, that kind of f- hey, freaked me out Rome. about the car shit, though. Like going in your car, I didn't even think about that. You know, you what just. What the fuck you know, is he gonna take from you? Fuck, I don't know. Dick pills. Stole your art books. One You'll four. know you got problems if he walks away with an Asian girl under his arm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Boone stole your art books, man. We really got to see a, 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 the uh, the dark side of the Boone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're really going with that. <laughs> You're. Right now, I can see you thinking, like, what's the well, that's next what I, That's what I love. That's what, I'm into that goofy Speaking shit. of the devil. No. Oh, the devil himself. All right. Hey, wh- you guys know what we do here. We, um, I'm lucky enough to be here at the Comedy Store, be able to do a live podcast in which a bunch of comedians, some of the funniest and coolest and uh, whatever, ballsiest young stand-up talents get a chance to uh, come up and do a minute and then be on a podcast and talk with me and a guest. And uh, it used to be a segment called uh, Tag It or Bag It, but now it's just sort of mm. just roll into it. Yeah. So with no further ado. Uh, if, what did you say, though, if you go over one minute, you get oh, the cast? Yeah, yeah well, uh, everybody gets one minute. If you uh, try to go over a minute, you're going to hear a cat sound. Uh, something like that. Something. Let me tell you what I've always wanted for the comedy. So when I was working the the booth at the uh, open mic downstairs, I thought that what they should rig the microphones with is a like a Cut off? significant no a significant electric jolt <laughs> that you could hit the switch in the booth and poof, and it would like shock people That's and hilarious. then they drop the mic just a quick <laughs> like uh, and they never did it uh, maybe because they barely had the microphones working to provide sound. We I have a dog collar that, that we could like have if on there with a button. That, honestly, that would probably. Whoa! Be kind of if we got an electric yeah. dog collar for the show, yeah, and yeah. everybody had to wear the collar for a minute, yeah, and yeah, that and that teaches you to know how what a one minute. Also, you know what it does. <laughs> It also makes uh, comedy even more humiliating, which is the one thing I didn't think was possible. But, yeah, it's perfect. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. So uh, we have a bucket full of comedians. We pull them out of a hat. Uh, and uh, let's have some fun, shall we? Yeah. Here we go. All right. It's that exciting. Iron Patriot, are you excited? I'm ready. Awesome. Justice will triumph over evil. I love it. I actually know this guy. I'm very excited about this. Uh, put your hands together for the one and only Russ Guten. Russ Guten. Russ. Russ Guten. There he is. He's in the flesh. He's back from New York. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm I'm Russ Guten, a Jew. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for everything you've done uh, for the country. I appreciate it. Um, so we do the bit, right? We do the bit, and then we bag it or tag it. Is that it? Just okay. do the bit, bro. All right. Don't, hey, don't. There's fucking, no talking to us yet. Do the bit. Do the oh, bit. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, my wife and I, my Italian wife and I, we have a little pizza bagel son, and the only other way to make money for him, uh, besides being a comic, is being an actor. And I have to audition for a lot of shit, comedies and dramas. 
Um, but uh, I'm getting a little bit slightly racist, though, towards sexy Australian actors doing a sexy American accent, okay? Because they're taking all the good jobs. People think it's the Chinese and the Indians and the Mexicans. It's not. It's the sexy Australians, okay? And whenever you see a sexy doctor, lawyer, or cop on television, it's usually played by a sexy Australian doing a sexy American accent, okay? So I've got to get this work. I've got to buy this kid's shoes. So this is what I've been doing. It's a little tip for any of the other actors who might be out there. Um, I actually just start all of my own. Set the time limit. Set the minute. Oh, man. There you go. Wow. I tried to get there. He initiated hard, tried to do a little crowd work with me at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know that was counting against my time. Is that, that, uh, <laughs> yes. Um, fuck yeah. Russ Guten. Who cares? Thanks for having me. It's good to be back here. I love it. Um, See the shot collar. Perfect idea. Thank you. Russ, how long, I, I remember uh, Russ is a uh, pal that, uh, that went to New York, and now he's back. Um, how's everything going so far? You, oh, do great. you know David Taylor? David, oh, what do yeah, you, no, Dave. Dave, what did you think of uh, what Russ talked about uh, there? I, he reminds me of a young Moshe Kasher. <laughs> uh, but other than that, I actually liked him. Thank you. Uh, there you go. Thank you. That's well good. done. Uh, although, let me tell you something. There are a few things in life more depressing than the, than the thought or the image of parents bringing their baby to auditions. Yes. I, I, that I, is, I've never done that, thank God. That's but I the hate worst that. form of child abuse <laughs> there yes. is. Yes, and also uh, I've had to run children's auditions where the parents are pushing uh, the child from behind where you're oh, yeah. no, through it's, the window. Like, I've oh, had auditions yeah. where it's me and a, per, an actor, and then they brought the child in to like show, like, this is where mommy went wrong. Oh, uh, no. I went, I, one time a kid gave me a note during an audition. What was it? He I'm said, not his child? Uh, no, it was obviously it was slow down, you're talking too fast. Okay, I like that, yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Patriot, what did you think of what Russ said? Um, if you turn out to be Macaulay Culkin, that could be okay if you're a mother. Yeah, it worked out great for Macaulay. A history of <laughs> sexual abuse and heroin addiction. Yeah. Man, sounds yeah. perfect. Yes. Sign me <laughs> up. And also yeah. Michael Jackson twiddled his balls, too. Yeah, but I don't know. He got some money. His younger brother's doing pretty good. I just saw him in a movie called 12 today. Is Macaulay Culkin Australian? Did I miss that? <laughs> Wait, um, uh, Patriot, what movie did, did you, you said you saw a movie today? Just the younger brother of Macaulay Culkin. We shouldn't be talking about that. Yeah, no, no, Kieran no, Culkin, right? He was in Igby Goes Down. Kieran, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, Patriot. Uh, there are multiple younger Culkin brothers. Yes, there's yeah. many Culkins. One of them bangs Scarlett Johansson. Patriot, did you see the movie today, you said? Yeah, on Netflix. Oh, on Netflix. Yeah, oh. I also saw a nice documentary on Carol Channing. Oh, <laughs> She's 92 now. Look at you. <laughs> yes. Just living the <laughs> That's life. That's good to know. Oh, my God. If you're wondering what the Patriot does in the afternoon. Is there nothing the Iron Patriot can't do? Yes. I'm going to tell you, um, she's definitely making it into my possible Deadpool list for next year. I didn't realize she's still alive. <laughs> Who? Carol Channing. Yeah. She oh, sang Diamonds wow. Are a Girl's Best Friend before Marilyn Monroe. Oh, my God. In 1949. Whoa! Can suck on that, Marilyn. This, this is like the oh, Iron Patriot. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Everyone, calm down. Everybody, just relax. <laughs> uh, Patriot, can you uh, hit that note for us one more time? Diamonds are a girl. <laughs> yes. That was. Gr I didn't know Don Cheadle can sing. That's amazing. He can do everything. I'm Norm Osborn. I'm the comic book Iron Patriot. Oh, all right, all right. Let's not get crazy. He's a, um, he's a, um, take it easy on him, Russ. No, I know, I meant, I meant, no, he's right. I'm saying he's right. No, whoa, yeah. I didn't want to. He's doing impressions through a fire. No, he's doing <laughs> yeah, Iron Patriot and I, I, I take man. my hat off to him. Can you do it just one more time for me, Patriot? Diamonds are a girl's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, that's really, really wasted on heterosexuals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right, let's keep it moving. That's Russ Gooden, everybody. Thanks, what are you on Twitter? He's, he's at Russ yeah, Gooden on Twitter, thanks. everyone. Hey, man. <clears throat> oh, this is very exciting. Uh, one of my favorite uh, new friends that I've made in the past couple years, and he's also autistic as fuck, everybody. Who could put, it be? put your hands together for Joshua Meyerowitz. That autistic thunder. How's it going, guys? <laughs> Ah, uh, my name is Joshua Marowitz. I have Asperger's, which is a form of autism, so I cannot relate to shit. Um. One of the main facets of Asperger's is anxiety. I get some horrible anxiety attacks. I got one recently. It sucks shit. You see, some schmuck decided to come up to me and he decided, hey, to tell me 
that the movie Demolition Man sucks and my brain just fucking broke. And I'm like, like, I went into the mental fetal position for like two weeks. Uh, it was not fun. That's why I started a new joke. Uh, I'm not happy about my torso. It looks horrible. I, if you're going to tell about the area between my junk and my man boobs, I like to eat. Look at this shit. It looks like a sad ghost. <laughs> it looks like, by the way, it looks like a grumpy ghost. Ah, I can't have nice things. It also looks like the elephant man trying to phrase the question, who? I am Joshua Marks. Thank you very much. Okay. Good job. I love it. Of course, as always. Sure, you're one of my you're one of my favorite uh, rising stand up comedians. I love. Uh, I'll tell you right now, I'm on board. I love Josh Byron. Yeah. Thank you Me guys. Too. I and, appreciate it. I tell you and, and, and by the way, to have all f for us to for the three of us to know you and like you, first of all, that fucking t that's like a that's like a one of those eclipses I love you that guys happens too. once every few years. Yeah, Esther didn't make it. <laughs> oh, definitely not. Don't relate me to her. Uh, definitely not. <laughs> what? This is what right. I'm the, I the, the only time I'd relate you to her is when I'm talking about your uh, bodies. Yeah, uh, uh, well, that's that's true. Hairy and gross. Yes. Anyway, tightness uh, up your asshole. You uh, know, I ju I'm just anti lifting up that shirt. I think you I just can paint the though? picture without having to have your shirt. Can up. I make a side note? I think not, it'll. Not, yeah. Not really. My favorite Josh Marowitz moment was uh, we used to do a show <laughs> up here, and uh, somehow we Josh got his hands on a uh, a, a fake What's pussy. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and by some I mean he let a woman slap him, slap him in the face on stage. It was fun. And okay, this is what took Josh from like here to here. He fucked it in the bathroom. Or at least I tried. Wait, what did he fuck? The he flashlight. He fucked the yeah. flashlight in the bathroom. Like he couldn't came. wait. Like it's no, no, no. <laughs> we asked him, him to do it, yeah. and he actually went in and did it, and uh. then reported and admitted that he couldn't get hard for it. It was the sort of honesty that I appreciate. So while I'll agree. Showing your shirt might not be the best move. I'll you think this. he was being honest? He couldn't get hard for it? Look at this Josh guy. Josh Marowitz. <laughs> I'll well, tell you, J Josh has a gift. He has a skill that comics have. I don't know if it's part of the Asperger's. He's really honest. That's going to serve yeah. you in good stead, man. So, I appreciate wow, it. What, Thank you. Take up the shirt. Do what you want to do there. But my point is that <laughs> that the willingness to do that, the willingness to show your junk on stage, yeah. which you've also done. And yes, that is I true. I wish I could unring that bell. Well, can, I just, can I tell you the description? My dick and balls looks like an acorn resting on a frog's throat. And he's a poet. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, in other news... Yeah. Um, Sounds hello. Like, a, like a child <laughs> describing their own molestation, but he is a poet. Daddy, no. <laughs> I tell you, uh, so... Uh, I say great job. I love you guys. Thank oh, yeah. you. Yeah. Do you have yeah. any more? Well, I, I just I, nothing I, but positives for I, Josh Barrow. I, so. I I have nothing but positives except I would not. There's just it's a thing in comedy. The pe the guys that lift up their shirt and actually show their belly. You really I, it's it's just it's known it's known amongst comedians as like an act of desperation. The ul the thing. ultimate prop. But let me present a counter example. Sure. Bobby Lee. Ah, How's that a counterexample? Uh, because a, a, a mentally handicapped yes, comedian. Yes, absolutely. Uh, no, Bobby is the, is Bobby all desperation, but he's a brilliant clown. The point is that you know what? <laughs> that might not be your thing, but I wouldn't say stop yourself from doing it just because. Only if it feels natural. Yeah. Exactly. Does exactly. it feel natural when you show a bunch of strangers your stuff? I like it when you do. Yeah, yeah, that's the second time I've seen you do that, and I, I like it. Can I add something? I think a good show for him would be the Ding Dong Show. No! <laughs> Patriot. No! Listen, listen, no. Can Patriot. I say something? Listen, Can I say something? Listen, I'm, listen, I'm nobody's listen, retard, Josh, motherfucker. Josh, 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 listen, relax, listen, relax, listen, relax. Listen, listen, relax. You relax. See, I'm, just I'm, relax. Josh, we... Gonna, last week, okay. on, I, I watched the Ding Dong Show last week, and there was an older Armenian gentleman mm. that they had let him take his shirt off, and he had liver spots and man boobs. Patriot, and, wait, Patriot, check it out, dude. I need you more on the security end of things and less on the uh, producer idea, like creating empires. Which just got me thinking because of the shirt thing. Shirt off. Yeah. Well, you're, you're rushing to judgment on By the that. way, Nobody's Retard would be a great name for your comedy. I'm Nobody's album. Fucking Retard. Yeah. But, but uh, with, that, yeah. with that said, neither are the members of the Ding Dong Show. It's not an insult to be you know, part of that. It's a very fun show. I watch it all the time. It's so much it gives, fun. It kind of gives me douche. However, it's not right for you because you want to be a stand-up comedian. Thank you. So don't let people freak you out when, you know. When I know. You, when if, they first came here, people were and like, I wouldn't look, And I wouldn't call them retards. That's not cool. No, no. I'm saying to when it applies. Just call them trannies. Yeah. yeah. So that, hey, Josh. 
<laughs> you don't let anybody stop you for calling people retards. You're a comedian. <laughs> there you that go. is your God-given gift. I you go around calling people retards. It's cool with everybody. I'm nobody's retard, motherfucker. There we go. There exactly. you go. He's back to that catchphrase. I love it. I'm learning something here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> hey, in your new bit, your new bit's you're doing good. Like you should really go into why you like Demolition Man so much and really like break that down because that's that's hilarious that you I love that movie. It didn't work out. You might need to go deeper into it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's Joshua Meyerowitz, everybody. That's at Autistic Thunder on Twitter. Um, I believe this person's blacklisted. I have to check with Josh before I call his name. I'm going to pick another name. Oh, this guy isn't blacklisted. It's Ricky Luna oh, at Ricky oh, Luna List. Oh, Notorious oh, comedy oh, store oh, employee, oh, Ricky oh, Luna. What does that mean, Iron Patriot? <laughs> Damn. Banned. Wow, that was the best one yet. First of all, that means wow. he's blacklisted. That sounds Black blacklisted. You're blacklisted if you miss your if spot. If you miss your spot, yeah. That's, That's why I, I think the last person I pulled. It's tough but fair. Yeah. Anyway, we're keeping it moving. Oh, this is exciting. This is a new name. Ryan Martin, everybody. Talking about poop. Get that ice oil. Ryan no Martin. Dice. Iron Patriot, what does that mean? Blacklisted. Wow. Holy shit. We are just going a, through them a reign tonight. Of terror tonight. Isn't that yeah. amazing? Wow. I love it. Wait, can you do that one again though? But can you add that howl thing that you did the first time at the end? <laughs> yeah, that's what it was missing. I knew it was missing something. Totally. We need that iron wolf in the fucking mix, bro. Hold on, a question. Lucas, how are you doing back there? Everything good? I'm good. Keep what going for Lucas. Yeah, Hello, everybody. At Nude City Films. He's That's right. one of my favorite uh, producers to work with. He uh, he helps us get uh, some of the amazing footage that you're going to one day watch tonight. That's right. Um, Probably like New Year's. That's at Dude City Films on Twitter and YouTube. He's amazing. He did my uh, Man on the Street thing where I insulted people at Hollywood Highland. Your next comedian is Keith Soul. <laughs> Oh, you got to oh, be kidding me. Iron Patriot, what does that mean? <laughs> that is the turkey, I believe. Wow. And there was no how, Patriot. I need the fucking how, man. <laughs> Blacklisted. <laughs> wow. There we go. So far, we have more people not doing this show than doing this show. At David Biddick. It's just David Biddick. He's at Biddick. Okay, so I want to talk about headlines, and I'm not talking Zimmerman or anything like that. I'm talking my favorite headline of all time. When I was in college, the school newspaper read, Masturbator zips away. <laughs> this guy got caught three times consecutive weekends masturbating outside of sororities. And all I can picture is this guy working a 9 to 5 and telling his wife that Thursday nights is poker night because she wants to watch like some fucking Real Housewives of Hollywood, and he just needs to get out of the house and masturbate. I just picture him standing outside the window jacketing. And when they see him and they scream, oh my God, how did they not catch a man with his pants around his ankles running back to his car? And I just picture the CSI team coming up and going, asparagus, garlic, oh my God, it's him again. And the picture, the woman trying to describe him through the window like, um, he was like six foot with, uh, I don't know, he looked like everybody else. He had a big bush. Uh, his penis was uh, circumcised. It wasn't the biggest I've seen. Hey, Moral of the story is, meow. I decided to start masturbating to Facebook, and I was never caught. Double kitties. Oh, that's a, that's a penalty right there. He got the penalty growl for trying to finish it up. <laughs> Obviously, he doesn't know that if you try to go over and finish the joke, you get another sound effect. In fair to Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what that we means, We both learned everybody. something together about that. Uh, yeah. Apparently, that's not good. I don't know. <laughs> you any, any, any other jokes you want to finish right before? Uh... Uh, only if you want a good No, one. I don't. No, it's a trap. No, I think it's a trap. I just wanted to hear the growl. They're, they're trapping you. They wanted to hear the triple kitty, which is apparently that is... That's the WeHo bear, by the way. Um, I am very confused during that. I could barely pay attention to it. You went from talking about headlines to masturbating zip thing, and then a a bush. I mean, I got lost over and over again. Was it? Am I, I, the I only tell one? you right now. No, I, I, I was following it all the way through. You might want to shorten the lead in. Uh, 
and used the phrase, I could picture this less because you do that once, it's probably good throughout. I think it's a, there was a solid bit. There was the, the act out. That yeah, was. I, 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 I can't even it. do an act out now. I'd say overall, uh, you know, how many times have you done stand up? Uh, this is the 34th time. Oh, awesome. you're way ahead of the game. You're good. Oh, yeah. You're good. Talk to Amy. She'll mentor you. Oh, yeah, totally. Careful. She's a predator. Oh, yeah. You're going you're uh, to be sleeping on her couch I, I almost tonight. feel like it's, it would be, yes. at third or fourth time, at this point, you know, it, it's almost ridiculous to offer feedback right. about the right. stage presence is good. Seem comfortable. Third or fourth time. I think that was excellent for the third, third or fourth time. Third or fourth time. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Now it all makes sense. Um, I say the stage presence was excellent. Uh, I was impressed. Totally, okay. and with, with the type of a uh, hip beard look that you know, that oh Calvin yeah, Tommy's people are loving beat off that. To you. Right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Faces like me and David's, we only go on after uh, one o'clock in the morning. No, you're, no, you're exactly. Gonna, you're going to be up at ten thirty before us. I'm no just time. hoping to play like the evil wizard in something. <laughs> uh, yeah. But no, you, you look. You keep doing what you're doing. You're good. But you know, uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah, third, guys, think about it. third or fourth time. Was that not impressive? Yeah. It's amazing. And furthermore, to have the balls to do something like you this. You know, it was and, good. Uh, this for, is some renegade shit. For Tommy to treat you like uh, somebody he disliked for like a year. So uh, Tony there to. Tony was like ready to rip you like a veteran comic. So congratulations. Yeah, just tighten it up. You know, just tighten the story oh, as much as possible. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, I mean, no. seriously, shut the fuck up. You said the oh exact God. same thing, Dave. Don't you? No, I mean, there, why can't? There, there was a lot of, you know, That's like you said. really had a, probably a lot of unnecessary. Nobody wants to, to hear that shit. Um, no, I great do. Job. Great job. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, Biddick. At Biddick on Twitter. Bravo, uh, bravo. Thank you. There he goes. There he goes. Third or fourth time. That's cool. How fun. He could be a huge star one day, and this will be like a thing. I remember when I, I saw young Whitney Cummings. Um, yeah, she was uh, just as bad as she is now. <laughs> yeah. It really was It's kind of awful to contemplate how successful she is. Well, I hope she gets in a car wreck. Continue. <laughs> Really is interesting. She really, uh, she re she really. She went must on the up have and sucked up. Satan's cock. That's the Something only solution. Like um, well, I just pulled a name out. I'm gonna keep that right in front of me for a second. But I want to acknowledge something that I noticed. At R Ricky Luna's back in the room. Oh, everybody, this guy's the best. One of the guys Can that missed his spot. Can we unban uh, him? Because let me tell you something. Uh, Ricky brings a high energy performance. Does he have the the toy? Yeah. Did, Ricky, did you bring the toy? Perfect. And do you have the musical accompaniment? Because this guy brings something I haven't seen since the days of a drag boon shaka locker. You know what? Since, since my guest is so excited, it, uh, we're not going to do the thing, but let's just listen to a minute of his of his, of what of something else that he's going to uh, Are you talking about the deep throating? The yes. Throat thing? Uh, what else am I talking yeah, about? The, Ricky does this thing. He's a door guy here at the comedy store, uh, another uh, stand up comedian, of course. and um, But he does one of, the, one of his. Uh, areas of expertise is deep throating a dildo. Um, that's an actual thing. Patriot, what do you think about that? Oh, that's hardcore. There you go. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm thinking, well, wait, Ricky, you want to do it? Yes, please. Should we let him? Uh, yes. He's back in the room. Put your hands together for at Ricky Luna lives off of his fresh band. girl's best friend. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ricky Luna, but my parents call me Pussy Bottom Faggot Jr. Um, Hold on. It. Does that mean that your father is Pussy Bottom Faggot Senior, Jr.? Senior, yes, yeah, that yeah. is correct. That I'm is absolutely correct. Yeah. I'm the second. Thanks. Um, uh, my parents had four boys, and three out of the four, 75% of my parents' offsprings are homosexual, which I think that makes the straight one the faggot, doesn't it? I think it... Uh, I'm a gay guy. Uh, it, it, does everybody know what that means? Um, it means instead of kissing girls, um, I have HIV. Okay, thank you. That's it. Oh. Wow. Heck yeah. Blow it up and By walk the away. Way, let me make a point here. <laughs> Tony, can I make a point? Yeah. We can all learn from Ricky Luna here. Comes in, brings the energy, boom, 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 leaves on a high note. Always, always a great closer. I have HIV. That's a guarantee. <laughs> That's true. Like that. uh, you can stop to follow that. I thought, you know, awesome. Ricky, once again, we and, learned something. From and you. he did before his time. No kitty sound. He, who won't even let himself get pussy in that way, people? That's how gay he is. He's anti-pussy. Well acts. done. Well done. Uh, 
no, 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 no niceties, no coming up here chatting. Just comes up, joke, joke, joke. Yeah, I'm out of here. It's true. Well done. Well done. Uh, you, Thank you. you. Good mic control. You know exactly how to. Although technically, isn't he a ringer? He fucking for, works at the store. Yeah, for a guy that deep throats a dildo, you're really good with the mic. Like it's like you don't get it confused. At no point do you put it in your mouth, which is one of the, just the worst things. I used to, and that yeah. was not a good thing. Yeah, don't do that anymore. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Why wasn't it a good thing? Because you realized that you had something. Because it's electric, ha and it just. And it's I don't know. It's just easy. Don't, 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 not on not on this show, buddy. Yeah, not a good thing. People have other people have to use it. There you go. And I yeah. But technically, you give head to married guys, so it's not like. You I mean, I don't know that they're married. They don't tell me until later, or I notice on their ring the the, the um the tan mark, but. The tan. You, mark. you know what? Yeah, because they like, take their ring off you're and then a gay they have detective. a detective. I you know I'm a sleuth. I'm a cock sleuth. How many Capital One Vikings have you? Uh, what did you say? How many Capital One Vikings have you Great blown? Question. Only one. Great question. One out of one. Yes, <laughs> Ricky Luna is also notorious let's, let's for... Let's not mention which one, though, because we don't want to get him yanked from the campaign. Absolutely, absolutely not. Ricky Luna is notorious for uh, sucking off one of the Capital One Vikings uh, one night here. Don't use the, the name. Don't use I'm not going to use the name, but I mean, you, I mean, he's a Capital One Viking, which is definitely worth noting. You know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's a resume thing. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Definitely under special skills. You, you should okay, definitely, that... It should definitely be on a, like a business card or something, you know. I have it's, a feeling it's on there. there is a business card where he's this doing way, that. Yeah. You can go, what's in your wallet? And just fucking pull out your business card. Man, and, you then you can, and then you can deep throat it. Tony, even then, when it doesn't work, you're always one step well, I'm ahead. still I'm tagging really, it until it works, awesome but thanks it, for no. pointing out that one didn't work. No, no, no. <laughs> you know what? It, they it wouldn't shows have noticed. you how great you are <laughs> that, yeah, that didn't work, and yet, man, you just keep coming up with them. That is really I impressive. I don't stop. Yeah, I yeah. shut down that uh, that panic. That That's what... That, no, no, no. It's you know not the, the bombing part. That's fine. Whatever. Right. I'm saying that the fact that you can come up with a Capital One tagline... Course. Well, that's that's just yeah. I, I in a way, painted a fake picture. He said resume. Yeah. I said business card. Right What's there. in your wallet? Made well it done. happen. Yes. It's Woo. a shame I'm not doing this for other comedians tonight. I'm just uh, talking, but <laughs> um, that's so fun. So uh, Ricky, what what else is happening in your world? I mean, it's got to be interesting. Oh, I'm gonna be in a um, a Shakespeare play in downtown. Wow, that's We're, the gayest you, thing I've ever heard of you hold doing. Hold on, hold on. It's are gayer you, than sucking off a Capital One bike. Are you? <laughs> I'm gonna be in a Shakespeare play. I'm gonna mean, Shakespeare. Or do you play? Are you no, play? I'm gonna, are you? Is uh, it The Tempest? Or are you playing? It's uh, Romeo and Juliet, and we're. I'm gonna let be. Let me guess. Um, you're not Romeo. No, I'm the nurse. Are you Juliet? <laughs> Oh my god, I just so had the weirdest deja vu right now. That was so. Nobody weird. gives a shit. Can anyway. I ask a question? Yes. Can I add something? Yes, please. Yes. Um, as a gay man, I'd like to ask you a question. I'd like watched, to answer. I watched a documentary on David Geffen. Yes. And he's a gay man, too. Yes, but he is. he did make an exception for Cher. Yes. And would you, as a gay man, make an exception for Cher when she was younger and beautiful? Uh, Why do I get the feeling that the Iron Patriot is actually Cher in a suit <laughs> all of a sudden? That is like the, the logical progression of the plastic surgery. Would you fuck Cher? N I mean, I would, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I... I would like for a dyke to fuck me in the ass with a strap on. Oh That's always God. been one of my like bucket list things. Do we have a bull dyke? You here are by a romantic. Most of Jobby, would you fuck me in the ass with a strap on? If I okay, cool. She yeah. said yes. Oh, there you go, dude. Doing your own little tangents, huh, Ricky? Sorry about that. Ricky Loon, everybody. Thank there you. he goes. Thank you, Tom. He's gay. He's proud. He's funny, young rising. He talent. sneezes on you, and it's also called a bukkake. Come to the comedy store and, uh, oh, yeah, he does, he loves fucking sucking dick, that guy. I mean, to suck a, I mean, to go Capital One, you know what I mean? He swallows balls with his asshole. He can swallow a banana hole. What? A what the fuck? Hole. I don't know, I just thought of it now. <laughs> I bet you did. Swallow a banana hole? <laughs> what, what would even a banana hole be? Oh, oh banana hole. Oh. Banana hole. I, I was thinking the same thing. You were like I a pictured, hole that the bad bananas go no, into. I pictured H O L E. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh God. I want to show you it. my banana with you. Oh shit. Oh, got this one. I already pulled somebody's name, so let's just keep it bumping. How you doing, Dave? You having fun? Doing great. I love it's, it. It's real. I've enjoyed the people you've had on. I love Some it. Of my it's favorites, fun, right? Ricky Luna. 
Josh Meyerowitz, two yeah. my favorites. Yeah, very exciting. Uh, Sean Leary. Here he is. Talking about Curious George. Nice share. Actually, I'm going to do something different now. Um, I'm afraid of a lot of things, but I think my biggest fear is uh, swimming into a shark's mouth. Because when I'm swimming in the ocean, I can't see underwater without goggles on. So what I usually do is I just um, swim with my eyes closed and just follow my heart. <laughs> but, but, but then like in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking to myself, boy, I really hope there's not a smart shark around. Because if I was a smart shark and I saw me, I would be like, that guy can't see. So what I'm going to do is, he's swimming this way, he can't see. I'm going to set up shop right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open my shark mouth, and I'm just going to let him swim inside my mouth. And then I'm going to close my mouth, and I will have eaten him alive. And I, I, don't, I don't want that. Thanks. <laughs> You know what this sounds like? The first draft of the pitch for Sharknado. <laughs> They're like, I like that, but is there something more? That was silly when you said like you were gonna follow your heart and stuff. It was very like that was the peak of the set, and yeah. then after that was everybody was remembering that part. Yeah. But overall, fine bit. You know, what do you think, Tony? How would you improve it? I don't know what it is. I don't know if I've had too much coffee. Or it's the comedians. I'm just having such a hard time paying attention tonight. I just, it was like shark, and then I missed the punchline, and then there was the new thing, and then I, you know, I'm just sort of out of it. Um, but I'll tell you this, uh, you have a, you have a, an interesting look. You look like the guy from Ghostbusters 2 that's painting Vigo. Oh, all the time. Like, oh Vigo! <laughs> no, uh, Vigo, I can hear you! That's great, but let me tell you what else I would happen as. <laughs> Part of the Stuart Thompsons, my new group of clones. Oh, yeah. that's great. Exactly. Yeah. I want you to be part of like uh, Stuart and the Stuart Thompsons. Yeah. <laughs> my group of graduate Stuart and the students. Thompsons. Yes, like Stuart and the Thompsons, my group of like graduate students that are going to take over the world, like put smile as they do it. Oh, See, so what do you funny. think? Amy, are how, you still here? Yeah. Stu oh, she how, how, old, how, old, how old are you, Sean? I just turned 21. Wow. Yeah, I'm only that's here young. for the summer. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, Where do you I'm go to school? Microphone. Emerson? <laughs> No, Ithaca College in New York. Oh, my friend went there. Oh, yeah. wow. That's what do you the, study in there? Uh, TV radio. Wow. Uh, Ithaca is uh, the second best school in Ithaca. Ithaca uh, is <laughs> the number and, one college that sounds like it's a prison. That's a good, yeah. <laughs> Am I right? Maybe Chino State. I don't oh, know that's, how, that's so yeah. funny. That's a good one. Yeah. See, you pretend like... You pretend like you're, uh, I don't know. David Taylor is one of the quickest guys I know. That's so sweet. For you to say, like, Chino State like that, like, it's nothing. So you sneak your little quick thoughts in, like, you're like a nurse that's like, oh, no pain. There you go. And then people just Yes, giggle. comedy Me, I'm like, here yeah. we go, everybody. Here's, it's coming. Uh, how many times you did stand-up? Um, I've been doing it, like, a year now, two years. In just, uh, upstate just, New York? Just, you know, at, just at school, of, basically, yeah. You know, uh, Regan went to Ithaca. Wow. Yeah, and Regan's uh, one of our, we have a friend who's a comedy writer who's outstanding. One of the Winter. smartest, oh, funniest really, writers. Really, really smart, very funny. He just, in fact, got a job working on The Family, Family Guy. Family Guy, yes, yes. Really big deal. He and I worked in the same show until I was fired, and they said, we want six of that. Uh, so he's that good. Yeah, he's really fa yeah. fantastic. So, you know, what you should try to do is uh, try to contact him under the auspices of some imaginary like alumni program. He's seriously awesome. I would try to sit down with him. Do you want to write for TV? Uh, I'd like to, yeah. What I would do if I were you, I would email him and say, I go to Ithaca. I heard you went to Ithaca. I was wondering if we could sit down and have a coffee. Okay, yep. cool. What was his name? Chris. I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? Find it out. It's Start. Chris It's Chris, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Chris Regan. Yeah. Thank you. I'm not going to. I was trying to all of a sudden put together the pieces that we did say like did we give him enough <laughs> to figure it out but i think we said his name is, is the rest of your material like oh, yeah, silly yeah. like that is that how all your stuff that you write is just kind of silly like yeah Zach pretty Galkin much just kinda yeah kind of like that i don't know it's like kind of half and half i don't know i was really nervous when i came up here i don't know i don't remember I don't what the bit was about what did you what bit did you just do it was just about how my sharks. biggest fear is swimming into a oh that was mouth. you okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. That's what I'm saying. It's fucked up up here. No, it's, here's the important thing. It's an ADD I'm sorry. fucking No, chamber. don't apologize. Here's the important thing for you to remember. 
The material is unimportant. All that matters is personality. It's all that matters in right. how you look. But I didn't look at you when you were performing because I was thinking about, I wonder who won the home run derby. Uh, <laughs> does anybody know? Well, you're fucking good for nothing. Anyway, that's what I was thinking about. Look, talk to me after, and I will give you uh, Regan's email, maybe. There you go. Okay, thanks. Maybe. You're not going to get weird, are you? I don't think so. Yeah, it's not a good sign. I don't know if I'd out. give him his email. I, I, I think he has enough to work off of. You find it. Find yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. If you, if you, I'll, if do, you, I'll do the work. Yeah. yeah. But don't mention my name. Well, how about, how about a big round of applause yeah. for Sean thanks, Leary, guys. everybody, on Twitter at Sean Leary Show. By the way, Ricky Luna was at Ricky Luna Lives on Twitter, and Biddick, David Biddick, was at Biddick, B-I-T-T-I-C-K, just for anybody if you want to tweet at anybody or anything like that. Some fine young talent. Oh, look at this, a female, a lovely lady. Put your hands together for Crystal Oates. Oh, here she is. Hey. So I'm dating a Jewish guy, and it's going really well. I'm learning a lot about Jewish people. Just found out that rabbis can date. I did not know that. And no, my boyfriend is not a rabbi. But he dated a rabbi. So I learned two things. Rabbis can date and rabbis can be women. Uh, he has a horrible reason for breaking up with her, though. He claims she had a very big bush and it wasn't the 70s. I'm guessing that's a lie. So now, just to fuck with them, whenever my bush gets out of control, I call it my rabbi. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm Crystal. Crystal Oates at you know what that Big sounded Chris like? LA. That sounded like a story from Life in These United States from Reader's Digest. <laughs> I don't remember those. It would be like little <laughs> anecdotes, and then there'd be a cartoon next to it, and there would be like a woman with a giant bush with uh, Jewish like headgear on it. Okay, that's that what I think it would like be. Exactly exactly the thing I would like to be, to read. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I would be horrified by that, but uh, How maybe some... How long have you been doing stand-up, Crystal? A little more than four years. Wow. Mm -hmm. In, a, a in L.A.? Thing, so. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You have such a cool look. Like, there's Thank something you. so Jackie Brown and charismatic about you. <laughs> I would... That's cool. Thanks. Yeah. Um, How long have you been dating the Jewish guy? Um, a year, almost. What's wrong with him? He's awesome. I'm not hearing that. Do you guys? What do you guys think about the relationship? No way. Ricky, he's awesome. Ricky, how do you I think mean, it's going with her and the Jewish rich. guy? Good he's question. He's rich. <laughs> there you go. Ricky, you you're good at assessing out problems with relationships. That's how you have sex with all of your, you know, gay straight boyfriends. <laughs> what do you think's going on with her and the rich guy who dated the rabbi? Uh, she's too much for him. What? Man, too much? Ricky, you are the best. Like <laughs> yeah. honestly, that's exactly the problem, isn't it? That is exactly the problem. Rick, Rick. Because I follow the rabbi, is that what you're saying? No, no. I don't get, I don't get where this is going. This relationship Ricky, is working. Ricky. <laughs> How much does she talk about his mother? Good question. Good question. How much does he talk about his mother? Josh. Not a lot. Rick, Josh knows. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. He doesn't talk about his mom a lot, honestly. Well, wait. Does he not love his mother? What's he wrong loves with him? Her. Oh, look. He doesn't love her that much. He's dating a black girl. <laughs> oh. That's like a great like fuck you to the family. To no be like, way. I didn't say you weren't awesome, but let me tell you something. Does anybody know awesome. any Jewish parents? They are crazy. Did, have you met the they're parents? Very, I'm sorry. I've yes, been I have. And they're How very How many times? Progressive Just people. once? We spend a lot of time together. How progressive? Can, I'm sure they have to act progressive in front of you, first of all. <laughs> uh, they're not going to no, act way. shocked like, like their son didn't warn them. Uh, you know, they're not going <laughs> to, oh my God, she's black? <laughs> the only way they're happy with this is if he dumped a Palestinian to date you. <laughs> Oh, that's true. I mean, they so really maybe do. he like stretched them out and then brought you in there. But other than that's that, true. no, they're horrified. They love oh, yeah. me. Did you meet I them at them. a haunted house? No. <laughs> where do, Where do they live? Are they LA too? The yeah, parents? Yeah, they're LA too. Wow. Yeah. West so, Side. So he yeah. just comes from money, money, money. Uh, maybe. Is he in a flalo? Ooh, that's hilarious. Yeah, well, what's his last name? I'm not familiar with that term. Oh, well, then you don't know what Jews is he, in Los Angeles. What does he do for a living? He is actually semi-retired. He works in healthcare. See what I'm talking about? What? How old? Where is are you guy? guys going with this? Honestly, I think his parents are cool with it because they've been dead for like 20 years. <laughs> his parents are alive. His grandparents are even alive. He's 45, and he's awesome. Oh, you're so funny. Yeah, Ricky. <laughs> The Ricky stuff that you have to yeah. convince yourself when you're I just spending some guy's cash. 
No. So funny. It's adorable how women will make it look like he's a great guy. I'd love to see how you felt about I'm here him if he only had, you know, three thousand dollars to his Stop name. and think uh, about this. Okay. I wouldn't know he's how I forty. Felt about You'd be out of there in a heartbeat. Yeah. There's no, there's no standing by your man. Oh no, Tony he sounds like a dream. He's a forty five year old guy who talks about his ex girlfriend's bush. Sign me up. This sounds great. That is true. Is that part true? We oh, were it's drinking, just a joke. And it was a joke he made. So I told you in the joke that he's probably lying about the whole bush. And you, she doesn't trust him. There's nothing good <laughs> oh, about yeah. this relationship. I mean, because who? That's like a silly reason to break up with someone. Oh, like, wait till the you whole hear. Relationship is honestly, she didn't wait till you hear what he gives you. No. <laughs> do you trust him? I do. Oh, that's so wow. sweet. That's really sweet. Have you ever had a, a Jewish lawyer before? I have. Why? How'd that work out for it you? It worked out wonderfully. We won. Is, it, Wow, well, what was that about? <laughs> next, accident. next new question. Uh, <laughs> Car accident. I this woman it. was on the phone, so. She's girl, she, Crystal has a lot of personality. I'll say it's a lot of personality. <laughs> definitely, you. definitely a shining, charismatic beam in a dark, Woo. dark world. Good for you, Crystal. Thank you so much. Thanks. That's Big Chris N L A. It's a terribly spelled Twitter handle. You, you have no marketing behind it whatsoever. Big K R I S, the letter N, L A. Nobody will ever get that right. You could just be like red pizza, and then people would go there right. easier. Yeah, no. yeah, one out of ten people find it. Right. That's good odds. That's at Big Chris in L.A. Oh, how exciting. We've had him on before, and he's back. Put your hands together for Jerron Horton, everybody. Live and in the flesh. Uh, I hate when my friends die, and people say stuff like, it's okay. God needed him for something special. What if that special thing was like a heaven versus hell basketball game? You know, people on earth crying and stuff like, Lord, why'd you take Martin from us? Because he has an amazing jump shot, that's why. Did you have to take Malcolm too? Yeah, he's 6'5". And hell just signed the big three. They got Hitler, Osama, and that dude from Glee. You went too hold far. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Heaven's been, heaven's been trying to sign Ma Magic Johnson for years. Let's give him A's, that'll kill him. No, okay, uh, let's make a sun gate. Maybe he'll kill himself. <laughs> you, know, you know Magic Johnson's if, gay, right? Yeah, if, if, huh? Magic Johnson, but pause, pause for a second. You know Magic Johnson is gay, right? Oh, okay. I'm just putting it out there. I, I was talking about his son, but... The I magic is also, but that's a great joke. Back, sorry. I'm going to make that clear. Well, I just had one more tag where, where I was like going to be like, uh, Magic Johnson, if you're listening to uh, Kill Tony, uh, heaven needs you. Um, they're getting killed right now. Uh, Martin Luther King just got dunked on by Osama because Malcolm X can't play help defense. <laughs> and it's going to end it right there. Uh, that that's is funny. a great bit, by the I way. I love yeah, it, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, the way you wired in uh, the new dead Glee guy, I mean, I yeah, just love that perfect. shit. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Can I make a point here? I would suggest maybe possibly one person was just bench depth or they didn't really need him, but just God is a really, really selfish GM. <laughs> that's a possibility. You have the, you, yeah. That's that kind of premise that you could stretch that out to be some crazy absolutely. seven to ten minute long closer. You know what well, I mean? I, yeah, was, I was. I was. Heaven and hell and. I was going to uh, use it to stretch it to talk about, like, because I think I can talk about it on this show because, like, your, your listeners are kind of fucked up anyway. But, um, <laughs> like, in a good way, though. In a good way. In a good way. Listen. I, I bet gonna, in a good way after saying that. No, they love me. Like, they love me at Jerron Horton. They love me. Oh, that's a good one. But, um, this guy knows how to promote oh, yeah, way totally. No, they, 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 I've have. been on there, like, three times, and they, they, they send me shit. Of course, yeah. They're Thank great. You. Thank you. Why, why do you think, why lesson, do you think Red yeah. Band and I are wearing custom-made Toronto PJs exactly, jerseys exactly. with our names on the back? Shit, I want one, too. That's nice. Dude. I bet. But uh, I was going to stretch it with the Trayvon Martin stuff because um, you know how uh, he, like, they were saying, like, someone was yelling help on the, ni the 911 call. I was going to be like... Uh, you know, and Martin Luther King got dunked on because uh, uh, Trayvon Martin can't play hell defense. But and that's a good joke. And I was telling that to somebody earlier, but it's just it's just not. I don't think I could ever get away with that. I fucking love it, and I totally you know who think else couldn't you get away with that. anything. Trayvon Martin. <laughs> that was good. And by the way, you could totally make that so that it, you know after that you say, I, I never thought I'd be able to get away with saying that. 
and then you could also slip that. No, in. no, I'm going to keep that for my. <laughs> versus health no, that's on not Martin how it show. works, Dave. <laughs> no, no, actually, I just came up with this great idea for a bit about a heaven versus hell basketball game, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think it's going to be great. I like, love uh, it. thank oh, you man. for helping me with that. <laughs> there he goes. By the way, no, that was like that's that. This bit is so good that right. it feels like it's in the wrong room, doesn't it? Like, oh yeah, like it should be. I can't get on downstairs. What? I don't get on downstairs. Man, welcome to my world. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> By the way, this guy won the. Didn't remember we had you in the. Uh, I got contest? second place because I don't eat pussy. Oh yeah. Well, we had. Who was it? What? It was like, we had some. What the girl, fuck is wrong with you? We had some. <laughs> Wait, you really don't eat pussy? Well, I have, but it's not like common for me to do so. You must hate it then. What is no, that I mean? love it. Is it, is I, it I common it for you to get laid? He's, he's yeah. a black guy. Black guys yeah. don't need pussy, guys. Well, so. yeah, but but he's sort of light skinned. Have you tasted a dick? Does it taste better? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I, I think I, I I mean personally I think that it's a uh, like eating pussy is just like a way to get pussy when you can't get pussy. You know, that's the way it's I like, see it. It's like cheating. Nobody cares about your opinion. <laughs> I totally see what you're saying there. Absolutely. This yeah. guy, I'm telling you, it's a. How are you not getting on downstairs? Uh, I just I signed the list, but they don't. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. You're black. Look. <laughs> that is yeah. That. No, yeah, I'm serious. Like you need to tell Tommy. Uh, Tommy goes back and forth between hating all black people and hating all black people, but being afraid for his job and giving them lots of spots. <laughs> so if you can catch him on like the second phase, you're gonna do <laughs> real good for yourself. Yeah, I hope so. Is he all the fuck yeah, he's afraid okay. of Trayvon Martin riots in the OR. <laughs> That's fucking sweet. Uh, Tommy's that sort of racist, the sort of racist wow. that doesn't think things through. Uh, man, that, I thought that bit was great. Uh, Thank you. you know what? I'm probably going to start acknowledging you now. Thank you, man. Uh, really yeah. funny, really funny. There he is. <laughs> At Jerron yeah. Horton. That's J-E-R-R-O-N. Horton. Make sure I hashtag it kill Tony. Oh, there you go. Jerron Horton, everybody. Trying to get one last, uh, one last thing in there. Um, this is exciting. We know this guy. He's uh, one of the worst producers, uh, one of the worst people that help out, but I love him. Um, he's an employee here and a very charismatic, rising young talent. Put your hands together for Josh Martin, everybody. Randomly pulled out of a bucket at Josh Martin Comic. Talk about uh, being a proud Hold father. on. Did you get the share greatest hits? Because I've heard Believe and If I Could Turn Back Time. Oh, I have everything for you, man. <laughs> no, how do you have share on... Why don't you share some more of those songs? <laughs> Hello! It's me! That's Todd Rundgren. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Um, I recently saw a picture of my, um, my nephew. I love this guy. He's the cutest kid. And I feel like I'm just like my sister's ex-husband, I realize. Because I feel like there's no moment prouder as a father than holding your baby up in the air. And you look at those beautiful eyes. Those eyes look back at you. And you realize you made the worst decision of your life. And then you just run. You run as far as you can. Like, that's what I would do. I would just run. And probably by a Can I pause this here? Right, yeah, let's just stop this because is, I can't is, think of another okay. thing. <laughs> Here's the thing. I won't this be able to a, pay attention to this. This is a good bit, but I'll say this. When you wipe out like you did in the middle of the you hold the baby. You have to figure I, out. No, I have gum in you, my mouth. Wait, wait, listen, listen, listen. Gum. Just, just relax, Josh. You have got, I've never been this direct with anybody ever on this show with an immediate game-changing piece of advice. You have got to do whatever it takes to be able to summon noises like that <laughs> to add into what I, you do. Shit, because even... all of a sudden, your words don't Tony, even fucking matter. Tony, you're asking for a lot of vocal control from somebody who can't speak regularly. <laughs> I know. He's the speech impediment comedian. I'll say this right now. But the bit's really good. But, man, that fucking wipeout. But I will say this. It did start a little creepy with the uh, I love my nephew. I feel like my sister's ex-husband. It took me to a weird place, but then you brought it back there with the wanting to run away. I, uh, I didn't get it. I, I just didn't get the, the sister's ex-husband. It seems like it's a yeah, lot of it's information. A lot, it's a yeah, little bit more information. But I'll say, if you can get to that place where you're holding the baby and thinking, I want to run, that to me is a good... Oh, you're relating that to how the dad felt. Yeah. Gotcha. He's, he ran away. So Did he really? Yeah. The way you say ran away is priceless. Yeah, it's great. 
You know, <laughs> Do it again for us. Wang away. <laughs> wow. Run, run. Uh, run, run, run. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say something about Josh Martin? Yeah. You notice, even when he's not doing material, even when he's making the sounds that I don't even understand how it comes from a, a grown-up adult. Right. Real presence, like, really draws you in with the Definitely. story. You know, this Definitely. guy, yeah, there's an X factor there. It's he, really... Well, he's got good timing. Okay? He's got good beats. His beats are good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's defi- you're definitely an interesting character. That noise thing, though, man. I mean, if you could I really slip that in shit. <laughs> but you need to figure out how to do that. That's what I'm saying. Is we, we, there was an amazing moment. I wish I was already listening to this I podcast that I, I could, could rewind, rewind it. Because, yeah. and- I mean, like that almost made a little pee come out. Like, I almost got to totally. that point of where I was having a nervous breakdown of laughter. Like, I wasn't I sure couldn't even believe it when it happened. About. Yeah, it was, it was that it. where it was like uh, that sound. <laughs> I don't even know what it was. It's like a little popcorn. <laughs> Having a baby. <laughs> like with that sudden <laughs> definite Edith Bunker sound there. I liked it. Yeah. I liked it. All right, you got 20 seconds still. Hold on, Kevin. Did you already go up downstairs? Yeah. I wanted to see it. How'd it go? Page. Are you going up anywhere else? Where are you going? This I want to see. This is not you. great for podcasts. Yeah, it's not good. What? All right, you got 20 seconds, Josh. If you want it. Uh, what? I'm good. Okay. Josh Martin, guys. There you go, Josh Martin. Um, fuck yeah. There he goes. What I like is how you're like, this guy's the worst producer ever, and Josh is getting up like he recognizes his intro. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Oh, that's me. I got it. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's Josh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Patriot, what would you think of Josh? Even though he abuses you, just know that he loves you. That's how I deal with it. Patriot, can you make that sound? I need more howling, man. I love the howling. At, in, at, towards the end of all this stuff, I need more howling. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. How do you make that one noise that's in the middle there? That, there's one that sounds almost fake. It's very orgasmic, isn't it? I guess for you. I bet we can get one more in before having to uh, head to our uh, main event. Um, is he here? Oh, wow. Put your hands together for Trace Stewart, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know you A were legend here. of the belly room. Legend comedy <laughs> story employee, notorious for hooking up with chicks. He says anywhere above, somewhere around the 75 since he's been... Uh, since he's been an employee here, around 75 chicks he's hooked up with at the wow. comedy store. Who knows? You could be sitting next to one of those ladies right now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, I'm going to make this quick, though, because uh, my bus is coming in eight minutes. I don't got time to miss it. Well, for you guys. It's only one minute, so. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Hold on, hold on. Can I pause here? Guys, this is Matt Goldich, uh, television oh, writer. Oh, hey. uh, Matt, wow. And also from uh, TV's Late Show with Craig Ferguson. You did that? Okay, here's the deal, guys. Can I suggest a, a segment here? Yeah. Can we have a guest guest where Matt comes up and gives his feedback about this comic? I think it would be great. Like A one-time guest One time. Guest? Come up here just for one time. Come up here. Just come up here and tell me what you think about his bit. Come on, come up. up, sit down. Matt Goldich, Matt everybody, Goldich, everybody in the house. A real live television writer and comedian. It's nice to see you, Matt. Oh, yeah. Nice to see you. Hey, Fuck yeah. Matt, Brian, we, Redband. Th- me and Matt and Tony all used to work in the same little corridor at uh, studio, wherever the place is. On a studio called. lot. Yeah, studio lot. Well, now, now we uh, all don't work. What, uh, what do I do? Okay, just sit here, listen to his bit, and then give feedback. Who's yeah. this guy? Yeah. Trey Stewart. How's it going? Never convicted of uh, sexual assault, Trey That's Stewart. That's true. Yeah. Never. I saw a billboard promoting plastic surgery for dogs. And I think that's the last thing L.A. needs is even more fake-ass bitches running around. Shit, we got enough. A cute girl got on the bus, and I want to talk about that. She got on the bus and sat right next to me, and I uh, started talking to her. Everything's going good. So I go to get a number, and uh, this is what she says. She looks at me, she's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I don't give my number out to guys who ride the bus. So you do realize you're on the bus, too. That's the only reason I was talking to her, because we were both losing in life. Right? And she was like, oh, well, if a guy wants my number, he's got to have his life together. He's got to have a good car and a lot of money. It's like, if I had my life together, I wouldn't be talking to your broke ass. I'd be out trying to find somebody. Bitches always want to upgrade for free, and I'm tired of it. And that's it. That's the end of it. Wow. 
That was more of a uh, more of a statement. Than a, uh, <laughs> Can I tell you right now? I hear like a young Morgan Freeman in that bit. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. He's gonna be a narrator one day. Okay, television writer and uh, feature comedian Matt Goldich. What did you think about that? I think you guys nailed it. <laughs> By the way, your hair's looking really good. Did you That's get a trim or what? Was this this yeah. is a TV cut, wasn't it? Yeah, no, post post TV. Oh, so how did uh, it go? I I have not seen the set. I hear it went well. How did it go? Well, first of all, I'm sure he's loving that we're talking about Hold on, him. hold oh, yeah, on. Totally. He's, he's learning. It. Yeah, it's oh, okay. fine. Yeah. It was good. It was fun. I held the microphone too close to my face. What is that? This well, was, this was in front of my mouth. Conan? Ferguson. Ferguson. Yeah. My awesome. favorite TV appearance in that, in that spot is Brody Stevens uh, did a set on that, but did not realize you were supposed to wear a T-shirt underneath and sweated out of his pits like Albert Brooks and Broadcast News. Yeah. If you still mention it. It's only a four-minute set. It was incredible. Yeah. I don't know how you sweat that much during a set. But, uh, yeah, it was really amazing. Now, did it go by quickly? Were you excited? Were you nervous? How old was the material? How'd it go? What did you do? You want me to answer all eight yes, questions at once? all at once. Tell me the about material it. material was very old. Okay. Uh, it went by very quickly. It was a lot of fun. It went well. I was very happy with it. Did I miss anything? Ferguson, what was he like? Very nice. And then did you tape that in advance, or was that night of the show? Taped it on a Wednesday, aired on a Friday. Very nice. And wow. A little behind the scenes. Friday night for Ferguson. That's fun. Four of you guys. Where are we? What? Oh, this is uh, Tony's open mic show. Oh, okay. Hi, Tony. Hello. How are you? It's a, it's a live <laughs> podcast. And uh, does anybody podcast? have any questions for this television writer recorded. Matt Goldich? Everybody. I don't even know. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Anybody have a question? Hold on. Yask away. Yes, Jaron. How many uh, pages does a writing packet have to be? Great question. <laughs> I mean, it really depends on the show. You've right? given him nothing. That's yeah. not even an answer. Basically, so that is the answer. You wrote for the Jesselnik that's offensive. That's actually the correct answer. How many pages answer. was the that's package? That's actually the, the correct answer. The Jesselnik offensive, yeah. how many pages was that for? It wasn't so much pages. It was like they wanted, you know, two of this idea, one of this idea, one of that. So, you know, really, you, 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 the biggest mistake you could make would be to submit something that was not right for that particular show. Great so you point. really want to get right. the actual... Uh, Submission requirements for that show, and then do it for that Pack show. That's packet. the best. That's the best advice. This guy knows use. about diversity, considering he wrote for Anthony Jeselnik and Ellen DeGeneres. That's wow, true. that is the spectrum wow. of misogyny to lesbianism. Well, I write for a lot. I, so, I only write for blondes. So okay, very nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, who is the and Letterman too? I guess technically counts. Well, he's I, strawberry blonde. I yeah, guess. I guess so. And with that said, uh, that's at Matt Goldich, everybody. Follow him on Twitter. Wow, uh, an exciting, yeah. exciting guest. You, you have to be an exciting, uh, yeah. exciting uh, second guest. Oh, knew, of course, absolutely. Was are you sticking around? Do you leave or what? What's the story? <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see you in a bit. My friend Matt Gold. Trey, uh, Trey, we're done with you. Get out of here. You there did you great, guys. man. Great job. Yeah. <laughs> Trey will be back soon. He's always here working. And uh, doing comedy, but most importantly, just trying to bang chicks. <laughs> That's all he's into. Trey's one of those guys that like can't hide how much he loves women. So like, if a strange girl walks by him, he, if we're like having he, this happened a week ago, there was a group of us all hanging out in a circle, and a strange woman who nobody knew that was sort of you know all right, cute I guess, walked by, and he's just in a conversation. He doesn't think anybody's looking, and he just dips right behind her, like with a stocky walk. You know, I'm picturing the... like a cartoon dog following a steak. Oh, yeah, totally, <laughs> exactly. I mean, it was very creepy. I go, what the fuck are you doing? I couldn't help myself, but immediately go, what are you doing? He's, he, and he, like, snapped out of it. He's, like, he, he gets so excited that he thinks nobody can see him. All right, anyway. Uh, this is an exciting portion of the show. Um, as uh, the people who have followed along know, um, the legend of Sarah Mostajabi and Kim Congdon, uh, two young, rising female stand-up comedians who started stand-up basically in this room and have been progressively being built um, th uh, week by week in certain ways uh, by whoever me and my friend is of that week. I'm very excited about this because we've decided to lift Sarah's ban, uh, her probation. She's temporarily off probation. Um, and last week we, we kind of ran out of time, but they both yeah. went up. You guys both did a good job. Right. Yeah, you guys did 45 seconds each. We were running out of time, which is why I've purposefully put a, put a few minutes here towards the end to be able to cover this because it's a part of the show that I always like and especially tonight I'm really excited about because not only are they both going to get back to their usual full minute of material um, but you know there's no competition 
It's sort of organically. We're just gonna unless they don't show up and then they're right. And the then and then you again. hear that noise that uh, somebody makes. <laughs> there you go, the old uh, dying dog at the end. Um, but um, so with that said, and also I'm very excited about this one because David is notoriously honest and uh, aggressive. Aggressive would be an understatement towards women. Uh, sometimes nice, most of the time. Not so nice. Like God himself. He tries to remind them of their father that hated them. <laughs> there was a reason for that. <laughs> so with no further, uh, what do they say, ado, or something like that, um, let's uh, start off with uh, the original um, female of Kill Tony. Put your hands together for Sarah Mostajabi. <laughs> or as she's known on Twitter, the infamous at Sarah dress is an icon since episode one. Uh, so a couple weeks ago, uh, when we actually, when we were the second time on the show, I was told that uh, my last name, Mostajabi, which is a Persian name, was too intense. Uh, in my defense, I haven't screamed out jihad since my last orgasm, so it's not really my fault. Although I get it, legend has it that if you say my last name three times in the dark, my dad shows up in a Cosby sweater and a white BMW and chokes you to death with a gold chain. Although you think he's wearing a Cosby sweater, he's not. He's just not wearing a shirt. Uh, and that hairiness runs in the family, right down to me. I have to shave my body with a sickle. Ch ch all right, all right, that's enough. <laughs> wow. Um, Okie dokie. Well, you really are uh, hitting those stereotypes pretty hard. Uh, <laughs> My my dad is an engineer. My uncle owns a liquor store, and my dad owns a tobacco. My other uncle owns a tobacco shop. A kind of like a notoriously stereotype fulfillment in my family. I mean, even the things that you just said right then give you opportunities for better premises than saying that he's not actually wearing a sweater. That it's like you gotta you gotta go one deeper. You know what I mean, David? What do you, what, you, 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 you agree Does with anybody what know saying? who won the home run derby? That's a serious <laughs> question. <laughs> Nobody has answered that yet. Goldich, do you know? It seems like you would have watched. No Phillies in there. Oh, who was in the finals? I thought that that you did pretty good. You could have went into more at the beginning when you said uh, like you, you say jihad in the bedroom, even though that's probably been done a million times. But you could say like you were blowing that dick up or something like that. You you probably go into that more. Uh, you only used forty seconds of you know a minute. You could have. Thr yeah. I'm the make of here. Like, she seems very comfortable on stage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Women usually are very comfortable at the beginning because they're used to being stared at. Uh, and then they kind of don't get any better because they're just getting constant praise. Right. Uh, <laughs> for no reason. Uh, but they don't have to improve. Again, Whitney has a television show, so you don't need to focus on improvement. Uh, <laughs> the name Mostajabi is your fucking ticket in entertainment. Never Ellis Island that. There are always going to be fucking opportunities for a brown woman. Uh, so if I were you, I wouldn't necessarily hammer the stereotype so hard. I would do the ridiculous thing where people talk about their family and do that fucking stupid accent that no, none of these parents have ever I sounded don't, like. Uh, you get, I don't want to fucking... I hate you, that. Wait, wait, hold on a second. You don't want to do that, but then you just did 45 seconds about screaming jihad with your pussy? Let's Look, not act like... I've been in this for a fucking month, so I would appreciate some actual advice and less dick holery. That would be cool. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't even dick holery. No, that saying? really wasn't. I'm hey, wait, saying choose where you, your integrity. Where are you going? I'm still listening. Oh, man. You, you are on double probation watch. You better get back on stage, young lady. Hey, you think this? You think you're. Uh, what the fuck? Huh? Yeah. The cat is wait, what's angry. What's that? <laughs> I think so you really think that I should do like the where I make like the Persian dad voice and honestly, what do you mean, make okay, it up? Isn't that was, what your dad sounds like? Yeah. No, I mean it's just so many, especially Persian comics, they all do that. Okay, and but, they're not talking about the sweater and the jihad. I mean, you hit every single stereotype. It's unbelievable. So you're saying that one I don't know, stereotype the only, is bad and one. The isn't. only two other Persian comics I've seen, they uh, both did that. So that's why I didn't do it. Did what? The voice, like the. Yeah. So you no did one. the only thing that you saw them do. I didn't. I did something I hadn't seen them do, because I haven't. But you did. But you have seen them all make hairy jokes and shaving jokes. And something on fire, by the way. It does smell like burning. Oh, don't worry. Oh, we have Jesus. our crack team of uh, the yeah. former general manager's imaginary father working on that. 
No question, that's great. Jonas <laughs> Oh, is that who won? Yeah. Fuck, he had a great first round. Did you watch? Oh, come on. Anyway, uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry, I was... You're talking about a home run derby that's going to be two weeks before anybody hears this. So. Um, okay. Sarah, you seem furiously angry. Like what? You're just, just like giving us these looks. Like we're supposed to be ama- blown away by. Are you no, dragging? No, the just the last. Excuse me. Whatever. What did you just ask? The fact that he asked you to do the voice is what offends you this much. I'm going to go into it. No, yeah, yeah, I don't think you have a leg to stand on, so why don't we go into it? What What is it that he said that offended you so much? It just our, the- our previous interactions and his general disposition toward me, I just don't appreciate it. And so when it just come out of his mouth, it just pissed me off. I'm sorry. I have a fucking vagina. I'm sensitive. Like, what do you want from me? Like. Anyway, that that's not an excuse, by the way. No, it's the old, not. I have a vagina. Look around you. There you are plenty do- of other people with ah! vaginas here, like Ricky Luna. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You don't you know, hear him that guy that. has had more in his ass than <laughs> yeah. anybody. Honestly, he's honorary woman, and yet he was able to take the criticism and respond. I thought we didn't admirable. criticize. Oh, okay. Well, why didn't we criticize him? Because he was fucking great. All right, Ricky, great job. He did bring it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, you know, she's a, she's a newer comedian. However, you know, I just think it's important to uh, to stay open minded and not get angry. You want to make friends in this business, so take it from me. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. There's Sarah Mostajabi at Sarah Dresses. Yeah, just don't look Dave in the eye when you see him in the hallway. It's the best way to get Yeah, fun. And don't try to make up for it <laughs> like later. It'll just be weird. Yeah. He just gets meaner the second Yeah, time. yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I'm excited uh, because this is the uh, awesome, this is one of my uh, awesome new fun things is uh, she replaced Sarah when Sarah missed her spot. And she actually started stand-up comedy on this show. Uh, very cool chick. Put your hands together for Kim Kongbin, everybody. Here she is. Hi, guys. Um, if there's one thing I hate about kids, uh, it's everything. Um, and I think that's because my mom had a home daycare when we were younger. Uh, and kids are such smart asses. We had a, this one little girl. She was a little black girl. And she had, like, her butt belly always poked out like this. And she had the little, like, Audi, like little black girls do, and the dried boogers. And I was like, Kanasia, it's time for nap time. She was like, but my, my daddy said that we could, we could sleep when we die. The fuck? Like, I don't even know how to get into us. Kanasia, it's time to take a nap. You go make me take a nap? I'm like, no, I'm not going to make you take a nap. And... With that being said, I don't know what the fuss is about abortion. Um, everyone's freaking out about it. I'm saying if you get pregnant, give it a try. Have the kid. You change your mind in a few years. You can always post abort in Florida. I hear it's legal there. And that's it. <laughs> there you go. Ad- always adorable, always likable, and with a smile, Kim Congdon. I, I have nothing to add. That was great. I thought right. that was really outstanding. Yeah. Good voice. Thank you. You did a great job. The voice was excellent. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, we could all take a lesson from, from Kim. I totally was everybody, <laughs> was that, could we please give another hand yeah. for her? Was, was she not impressive. fucking great? Very impressive. I, it, I was, it was beyond impressive. It shows you what what could be done. You know, it, it, it's truly uh, outstanding. That's you know it's a it's so refreshing to see someone with talent on this stage. I just that was Tony. Thank you for letting me see that. It makes me feel so much better about the last like three minutes. Absolutely, I totally agree with you. I think the bo- dry booger baby impression. <laughs> David, David, David. If you're not here, there's a standing ovation taking place right now. Uh, I don't know if the cameras are picking that up. And high fives are happening. Thank you so much. You're, you're leaving? Is it at the end of the show? No, get, what do you mean? What are you talking about? <laughs> what, what podcast have you been on where you just After one? seeing that, I feel like everything is going to be a letdown. Okay, that was really good, and I was a little surprised. What do you mean? We still have to check out with the Patriot. We're going to get some. Uh, anything you want to plug or anything? Kim, Kim, by the way, what is your official Twitter handle? Um, it's Kimberly Congdon. Right. Kimberly. C-O-N-G-D-O-N. Gotcha. Yeah. And Sarah was Sarah dresses. Of course, she's very yeah. notoriously uh, followed. It, it, it's uh, I have like 46 followers now. 
So it's you know what? Deal. You maybe will get up to forty-seven. I hope so. <laughs> I hope wow, somebody else. David Taylor no, no, I'm not going to do it, but oh, somebody else will. Oh. <laughs> um, Still, was, I thought it was great. And uh, how you've been doing spots other places since you um, started here yeah. a few weeks ago? Yeah, I hosted yesterday. I did a couple of shows yesterday at Hooters, and, right? Yeah, this is at, like my sixth time going up. Nice, awesome. Yeah. Wow. Okay. There she goes, Kim Congdon, right, everybody. Cool. Awesome. Always a breath of fresh air. She's crushing. Love that. Uh, love that. Love that. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody do the dry booger voice. Like, <laughs> like you hear it in I'll real say life. That, that but... voice was really good. I, now, was it racist? Probably, but still great. You know, yeah. it's kind of like the, yeah. the Zimmerman verdict. Was it racist? Sure, but did I agree every second? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I yeah, grew I like up in that. a I grew up in a black neighborhood and uh, a prominently black neighborhood and um, uh, I think the word uh, you're looking predominantly, for is predominantly yes yeah. of course yeah. I noticed that immediately okay, good. trust me I'm just as much of an obsessive <laughs> asshole as you are um, and I I've heard that noise so many times and I haven't heard it that, in forever I know that's and, a great yeah that's really that voice is really yeah and, and the, by the way the name perfect you know. If that wasn't a real name, I feel like they could put you to work naming black babies. David, what are you doing? Anything to promote? You're at, at, what, this, at this David Taylor on Twitter, is that correct? Yeah. This David Taylor, spelled exactly like that. This David Taylor, at this David Taylor on Twitter. All as always, so much fun to hang out with you. So always much fun to have pleasure. you be part of it. Thank you so much. I yes. can't wait to hear the feedback on this. Iron, Iron Patriot. Anything coming up? Anything you want to promote? He's at Comic Patriot on Twitter. Any last words before you knock over your own microphone? This is the only show I do. This is the only show you do. Are you... I want to say something about this guy that I learned today. I listened to the uh, Skeptic Tank. Yeah. Ari Shapir. Yeah. And in the 90s, he owned a million dollars of stock. Oh, my God. he left the company six months too early, and that's what he went to, in the comedy to do. No, no, yeah. the company left me. They fired me. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't me leaving. That was, like, the way I left my last job writing on television. It was, it was hilarious. The whole story was great. Thank you so there much. There you go. So, there he is, the Comic Patriot, Iron Patriot. He's at Comic Patriot on Twitter. Again, a shout-out to at Dude City Films yeah. for hanging out, producing, taping, being a fun friend. Uh, Sarah Dresses, Kim Congdon, Josh Martin, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Toronto, again, one more time for an amazing fucking weekend if you're listening. You're, you saw the jerseys. We wear them with pride and proud. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>